Hey everyone, today we're going to code footsteps, or rather the particles, little dust particles at the feet, so when our sprite moves across the ground, we get little particle poofs. So let's make it happen. First we're going to start in the code base uh, before we move to the editor. We want to make an event that we can use in blueprints, so we're going to make a U function here and make it a blueprint implementable implementable blueprint implementable event void on footstep then down below we're going to need another timer so an f timer handle and we're going to call this the footstep timer and one last thing we need a bool and call it footstep gate. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this, this is an uh, uint8 of one bit, and it's just a flag of zero or one, and this is how you can do a bool in the code base. So don't get confused. I've already done it up here for is moving. Um, this is pretty identical to a bool, but I believe it uses less memory. I don't know. I've seen other tutorials use it, and I got used to doing that. So that's what I do. Uh, in implementation, we want to go to our constructor and set our footstep gate to true uh, when it first um, constructs our character so that that gate is open. Next you want to get to your animate function and inside the movement, so when our velocity is greater than zero, come down here and after we have set our flipbook for walking, we want to first check and make sure we're not falling. And then if our footstep gate is open, we're gonna flip that. So we're gonna close our gate first. Then we're gonna call our event on footstep. And now we wanna set a timer because with a sprite animation, um, this would be happening constantly. So uh, our, our, our little particle effects, we would just be launching them off um, infinitely as this animation is going. So we don't really want that to happen, we want a delay. Usually with 3D animation, you would use a notify event, so when a foot touches the ground, you would trigger a notify. Um, unless you're using the Pixel 2D plugin, there are no notifies for uh, animation flipbooks. So we have to use a timer. And so the way that we do that is we do get world timer manager. We're gonna set a timer our footstep timer, and we're going to pass a lambda in so that we just flip our footstep gate back open to true. We don't need to call a f an actual function. That would just make our code base messy um, if we're just flipping a bool. So what we do is we capture this object so that we get that variable. And then all we're doing is we're setting our footstep gate to true. And that's it. That will call that lambda when this timer runs out and we want to do it I found 0.3 seconds to be the best and then we don't want to loop we just want to run that one time and flip our gate back open let's go ahead and compile all of that okay in the editor there's a few things that we need to do I have created a particle effect using sprite animation just zoom way in here these are four different cells, basically, of 16 by 16 each. And that's all you need to do. You can make it as long as you want, but four cells is pretty nice. Import it, go to your sprite actions, and apply the Paper 2D texture settings. Now, we need to make a material, and this is the fancy part. I lifted this, I think, off of another YouTube video. Um, basically, you want to grab a particle color node, multiply that, get a texture, and I um, I made this a parameter so that I can make a material instance with different texture settings. So in here I just did, did the um, dummy sprite texture. I know my face is in the way. Get that over, no, no, that's just messing it up. So grab a texture node um, and then right click and switch it to parameter. 
pass the RGB over to multiply, so this is where we're going to be able to change the color of our, our sprites in our Niagara effects. The alpha needs to go to a multiply. You're going to multiply that color in, pass it to a clamp with the min and max just set to 0 and 1, into an opacity depth fade, and in order to get this opacity, you want to come over here, let me scroll down so you can see it, and set your blend mode to translucent so you get that opacity. This is your base color and emissive. So go ahead and just copy this and you can look it up and understand it more if you would like to. Once that's done, make a material instance off of it. Name it Poof Dust, I don't know, whatever you want. Pop that open, go to the details, find that texture and put it in here. You now have this guy. And it has all four of our textures, so we're going to do something cool in order to rotate through the UVs and select uh, each of those. Make a new Niagara system. All we need is an omnidirectional burst in here, and you can get that by adding an emitter. Search for omnidirectional burst. Come down to initialize particle. I like a lifetime mode of random from 0.2 to 0.8 for the lifetime min and max. Mass mode, random, 0.4 to 2. And sprite size, random, uniform, from 25 to 50 is what I found to be good. But you can play around and make this as big as you want. Now the thing that we need to do is under particle update, you want to hit this little plus, and you want to search for sub UV animation and drag it and put it up at the top here animation mode linear and you want to set your start frame wherever you want but zero because we want it at the beginning and end frame three because we have four separate frames here so zero one two three the loop count will speed it up but one will play it just tick 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 kind of like that down at the sprite renderer is where you're going to drop in your material and this is important sub image size the X value is 4 and the Y is 1 because that's the size of our sprite sheet. We have four cells, nothing in the Y. So that's going to signify just how big our sub UV is. And what over here you should see, our little 2D animation, poof dust. Uh, obviously yours is going to look a little different because I haven't said this yet. Gravity force, I have a negative 250 on the Z. Drag 0.75 might be different. I haven't changed anything in the sprite size or color or forces, but let's see. Velocity strength, maybe 150 to 350. You can play around with that. Sphere radius, this is the sphere of the, of the start. Particle spawn, I've set that to 10. Um, a lot of this is just trial and error. Um, when you're making particle effects, you just play around with these until it looks like what you want. I think I've covered everything in the Niagara system. Um, if that wasn't clear, please let me know in the comments and I will try to uh, help out in any way. Particle systems can be a little, um, a little random. Last thing we need to do is go to our player character find our on footstep event that we made. We want to spawn a system at location. Find our poof dust Niagara system and the location get actor location. We're going to subtract from that vector and I found 75 down on the Z axis, puts it down near the feet. Save, compile, play. And there you go. We have poof dust at our feet as we run around. Pretty cool, huh? I've also added it to the enemy here um, on footstep so you can see it going. If you have enemies or any NPCs, you just want to call that on footstep event as well and spawn a system at location. Or you make a parent blueprint, which these guys all inherit off of so that you only have to do it once in the parent. One last thing you might notice if you are using a camera depth of field effect to blur, by default, 
you might notice that the, um, the, the, the particle effect is not blurring. In order to do that, you want to search in the details over here, DOF, and you want to uncheck render after DOF. If you uncheck that, your particle effect will blur with the camera. And uh, then as you move away, if you have this depth of field effect, and we wait for our little guys to run again, you'll see the particle effect is blurring in the camera field. So that's how you create little particle effects for footsteps as you run around. Until next time, see ya.